As you can see, I know about heroes. I know about heroes from anime. I know about heroes from cartoons and comics. I know about heroes from movies, etc, etc, etc. And what I want to say first and foremost is that there are some tropes we love to love. We love found family trope. We love the relatable hero who has struggles but also has things that are in his life that make him worth it. And we have the overpowered, or well, maybe not overpowered, but really strong, powerful characters uh, who have balances of weaknesses and strengths that we love to see grow and become the heroes that are inspire us but what are some that we love to hate what are some that make us think oh i need to quit my job because even me even i could write better than these millionaires that dc marvel madhouse disney hire to write these god awful stories with these god awful tropes or even good stories with terrible tropes in them well i took a look for myself me who knows about heroes and knows about the tropes that we love to love and i yeah i decided you know what i'm going to put my foot down i'm gonna find and rank the worst of the worst hero tropes to ever exist and if you have time then check out my description there should be something fun for you to look at or do down there somewhere yeah <laughs> okay so <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that's how I started this one. Okay, so I tried to look for tier lists like this, but I couldn't really find one that suited my taste. So I had to make this myself. And to do that, I watched some video on YouTube. I also looked online on Reddit and stuff like that to determine what I wanted to be on the tier list. And I made a list. So I'm gonna now make it as we go. <laughs> That's 50. <laughs> okay, while that's loading, I'll just tell you about my key because you need to know the key. So this is a simple key because I didn't want to, you know, waste too much time. I've already spent ages making this tier list. It's basically based off of how much I wish it doesn't exist in good stories. So how much it ruins something. Christiansen's ethnological article in 2021 indicated that exposure to diverse written fiction could aid in escaping the pressures of the Danish job market. Basically, if you read and consume good fiction, you have a better chance at being a stable person. So by depriving me of this, oh, I have a grudge against these tropes. So yes, this is the key. How much is it depriving me of a good story and a good mindset? The tier list, it's loaded. Oh my God, it's loaded, it's loaded. 54, so many tropes because Reddit and YouTube had a lot to say, a lot to say. And I am nothing but committed to finding out everything I can for you guys just so you we don't ever have to revisit a topic again because <laughs> I'm gonna do it till death. So without further ado, here are the worst hero tropes that I could find or that exist and starting with the first trope let's see where i put it in here let us see so the first one is i'm mad i'm gonna be a villain so the i'm mad i'm gonna be a villain trope is basically evil superman it was the actually this is very ironic that this was the first one it was the trope i saw everywhere evil superman evil superman evil superman evil superman evil superman, evil superman 
everyone hates this damn trope where just a character who you don't expect or you don't want becomes a villain for no effing reason or another example is just a villain who is like oh i have a somewhat annoying life i'm going to become a villain that's the trope this trope i i'm not actually as angry as other people might be about this trope i think i actually don't mind it like please don't kill me but i don't think this trope is that bad i think it's cool because it's usually temporary and it's usually just a, a a little thing to spice something up i'm going to piss so many people off for now relax for now i'm gonna put it in i kind of like it not gonna like it's kind of fun okay next one no consequences for mc's actions they will like hurt someone make some really big political issue or something and there's no consequences like nobody says nothing that is a bit annoying i wouldn't say it's overused but i'd say it's stupid it's like nobody cares nobody holds them accountable for anything but i'm, I'm not like very viscerally i hate that that's like yeah that's stupid like I, no one likes that you can't date a hero it's next one hate this fucking trope i'm gonna put this into i hate i don't want to eradicate it because i understand it but i really don't like it it's the whole i'm a superhero so you can't date me love i'm so emo i do appreciate that you need equals in your life and you need people to be equal to you in certain vein which is why i'm not gonna put it in eradicate it but at the same time you can date someone who is equal in a different way maybe they're equal in personality equal in the way they hold themselves they can be a civilian with no fighting powers but still be confident bold beautiful and it's like why can you not date somebody a hero like it just pisses me off whenever it comes up i'm like i've seen it before please i'm i'm, I'm sick of it i'm sick of it and it can happen you can date a hero you can so it's, it's just wrong in that sense it's just like you don't want to write them to be able to date a hero or date another person like you want this hero to be upset and you want them to have no value or no nothing happy going on in their lives like it's just so stupid and i uh i just i don't like it it's more than just uh, it's dumb it's overused it's like i don't like this i hate this like i really don't like this trope a hero with a dead wife or dead husband dead wife was the phrase that people were using is like it's just a little bit of angst um it's neither here nor there i've not really seen many examples with this somebody's gonna mention it i think uh, green lantern hal jordan i think he has a case right he has a case where he has a dead partner but i i don't care like i mean i i it's fine I don't mind it. We're, we're nice and even, actually. Put them all in a nice order. Hero to anti-hero. Yeah, that's a bit irritating. I guess that's like Jason Todd turning from Robin to being the Red Hood. Eh. Eh. Another one. I don't... It's neither here nor there. I don't I don't really... I mean, it is overused, but at the same time, everything's overused. I don't know. I don't, I don't agree. That it's, I think it's fine. It is what it is. I just want to be normal. That pisses me off. <laughs> I'm almost close to putting this in and eradicate it because like so you're telling me that you're born with powers you 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 okay yeah maybe i won't put it in eradicate because if i think about the hero aspect from a fantasy perspective like an isekai we're talking about all heroes we're talking about all superheroes heroes everything right so in isekai specifically you get taken to, typically you're put into a world against your will you you become a, vi a hero for this country to defeat a demon king xyz rpg kind of stories and you don't want to be there you just want to be chilling but the, you don't want to be special but at the same time why would you want to be in a fantasy world and not be special but like you don't have to do what you need to do i guess you you don't want to be special because maybe you were summoned because you were special and you want to go back home but outside of that very specific situation i really cannot stand this trope like i i hate it it's like you get blessed with powers and you're like i just want to be like everyone else shut up shut up it's giving like you are gifted and you're like you're rich i just want to be poor i want to be relatable like mm, i oh, I, I i i cannot i can't oh i can't stand it it pisses me off so much every time i see it oh, okay i'll put it in i hate for now it's just a scratch kind of funny i think that passes because like it's just a scratch it's like you got stabbed like babe i can see it's like five bullet wounds it's not just a scratch <laughs> like i can see it i feel like honestly it's funny like it makes me laugh i wouldn't say i like it because it's like it can get irritating and fake like it's just a scratch a train ran over you like you're not fooling no one no one like i feel like sometimes it can be funny and sometimes it can be like a, a way to excuse a very deadly wound for no reason she don't need no man 
that was interesting i don't know where to put that one you see that's one woman right there and she don't need no man she don't need no man but i don't want that to be her characteristic she can just not need a man without saying like i don't need no man or like having that as a vibe like in some movies she's like i don't need no man but then in justice league animated series you know, she has like mutual affections for batman which i really like even though i do like he has more like selena or steve steve trevor whatever her main guy is and i don't think she needs a man but i i think she she could have a man if she is interested and so by saying she don't need no man i feel like that whole she don't need no man thing is a bit mm, tired so uh, yeah, maybe i'll do that <laughs> this one multiverse crises on civil war <laughs> these three i just wanted to lump them in together because they're like big world ending things these big events that are just so redundant and just so like the, oh there's something with the multiverse oh there's some crisis somewhere and, uh, oh there's civil war between the heroes like it's the same thing you go marvel you go i mean literally civil war we're talking infinity war we're talking end game all of that ish infinite crises that sees that dc is going through days it's like the same same nonsense over and over and over again we're gonna reboot we're gonna reboot we're gonna reboot jeez and so i get it it's i think this is more the overused and stupid kind of thing okay um rushed resolutions so rushed resolutions is basically there's a problem it's rushed quickly there's a whole thing with red tornado being a robot by is it ivo red tornado is like the superhero in the justice league and he is a robot and he has tornadoes he uses tornado whatever and he especially in young justice he was like taken over or corrupted by other like his creator and, and other geniuses i don't know what the words are so say like he switches to the other side right or he just works for someone else very quickly and then all of a sudden he just comes to the team and after like i don't know taking out a chip or something and it's like hey i'm back like that would be a very rushed resolution you know in a hero setting i think that's like annoying because obviously you want to understand what happened um but it's definitely not it's another neutral kind of one a bit less than passes I, I think it's bad i think it's definitely on the bad side i don't think that it's like awful like i don't have any passion to be like oh no i hate it like uh, fighting is always the solution oh my god this one so fighting is all the solution the hero is always fighting if there's a misunderstanding the, f the heroes are like oh let's fight about it like this and then you find out that oh there's a misunderstanding they shouldn't have been fighting in the first place they'll just jump the gun to fighting anything like there'll be a problem and captain america will be like oh we probably should just go and face them or something i don't know i feel like spider-man doesn't do it as much and that can be irritating like jeez it's like oh my god you just want to immediately fight and throw hands like relax do you know what i mean so i get it i think it's stupid i think it's frustrating and it can be funny but it's more frustrating than anything villains are the secret puppet masters there was a video i was watching while researching for this video and it was talking about talk or basically just like the whole idea where the whole story arc where there are characters who are having issues with each other the hero is going issues with their private life and there are problems uh in the government and i don't know just loads of different issues and then it c turns out that after like 50 chapters or 50 issues i think in comic books it's called there's there's one perpetrator there's one mastermind and it's this villain and it's kind of a tired trope like it's really stupid and boring but at the same time i i think i think it passes because for me villains are the secret puppet masters i don't have that much qualms against it because i think that it can work but it depends on what villain if it's Rachel ghoul you know it's zod or you know i don't know the the viltramites or something in invincible those villains would be good puppet masters so that's why i'm not putting it lower than overused slash stupid okay next rich mc's going bankrupt god i can't fucking stand this one okay i won't put it in eradicate it i was considering i just i i i what's the point what was the point of making a rich character if you're only gonna make him or her or them bankrupt what was the point why would you make them rich in the first place would you turn spider-man into a rich kid like would you do that no you wouldn't would you let him invest in crypto no you wouldn't you wouldn't write a spider-man or at least canonically you wouldn't want spider-man to be into crypto and get rich so then why would you write bruce wayne to be a poor himbo who works at bars like what 
what are you thinking like what tony stark lost his money and now he works like what at a strip club or at a tech firm what is the point it's a stupid trope and it's like okay maybe it, it makes sense in like one-offs fundamentally i don't like it like fundamentally i feel like it doesn't make any sense and it annoys me so even if you could potentially maybe possibly make something of it makes sense you don't have to make them poor permanently you just have to be it so that they're not in a situation where they have access to their money like kidnapped or something that is interesting like you know how the whole first iron man movie if you're a billionaire and you go bankrupt you did that like you unintentionally did that that's impossible to anyone who's just normal competency the other dimension changed you can we get a voice for jonathan ken jonathan does he have a middle name i don't know jonathan kent superman's son is the first person coming to mind the other dimension changed you jonathan kent was supposed to be a part of the super sons and he and damien were supposed to be besties for life and i wanted them to grow up together age appropriately <gasps> tell me why dc thought it was a good idea to age jonathan kent up so now damien is what 14 and jonathan is what 19 what were they thinking they wanted to make the goody two shoes jonathan kent the adorable adorably cute refreshing thank god for him existing sweet jonathan kent into this emo i had to be by myself in a volcano guy who completely changed from the other dimension and it was so pointless it was so dumb i mean it's, I, maybe it's jonathan kent that is making me put it down here maybe it's more like a past because i think it can work like if you go to another dimension and you learn from that dimension like bruce coming back from time or whatever okay i'll put it in my, it passes for now but that thing with jonathan kent really angers me so i don't know disposable love interests fucking useless i i don't i hate it it's dumb it's really stupid it reduces everybody down to nonsense it's like why just don't in well just don't just don't add them too many additions overused like we need a super boy then we need another super boy we need another super boy we need a super girl we need robin one robin two robin three robin four robin five robin six robin seven, robin we need a hundred different robins we need a hundred different supermen we need a hundred different spider people that is very relevant you know into the spider verse it was cute but the whole point on the premise is that that's how many <laughs> there are <laughs> like it's a great movie or trilogy i'm guessing it's gonna be true yeah both the first and second movie are amazing movies but like the whole point of it is actually that that is the amount of spider-man <laughs> that exists it's overused overused absolutely overused oh my god okay short lasting character growth oh my days okay i'm erratic that's my i think that's my first eradicate it i can't stop it the most meaningful character development happens and with that short lasting character growth that pisses me off so much because you have the whole character arc you have the whole story arc and so much happens and then our hero changes they stop from thinking oh before they were like i absolutely hate pineapple now they're like yeah maybe and then the next show the next the next art they 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 order pizza and they there's no single pineapple on there and it's like like yeah yeah you don't have to but why would you just get rid of that whole arc like i thought from now on we're gonna see pineapple and pizza i thought that's what the, what was gonna happen i thought you were gonna do that but no and that happens this character growth is obviously not pineapple pizza like character traits and personalities and ways of doing things and ways of living and maybe they're dating someone maybe before they're like ah, i'm not gonna date anyone you can't date a hero that's stupid trope and but now and so, so now after this story arc they're like oh maybe i will maybe i will try it. and then they just proceed to be forever alone after that that kind of thing it's just oh, it's irritating inconsistent moral codes and mindsets that's kind of related not exactly but related i i actually think this is fine a lot of people don't like this one i saw this as well people don't like this one but it's like the fact that depending on the story the characters will do one or the two things and they might be hypocrites if you look at the stories as a whole i think that in a long lasting story like marvel dc those kind of stories that is fine for inconsistent moral codes and mindsets because i think that depending on the writer depending on the mood it's like it, you know like you can't expect batman brave and the bold batman to all react the same way that this new animated gothic kind of batman thing is gonna act like so i think that having the different moral codes and mindsets is fine in that case if 
it's in a story that is supposed to close and end is a bit irritating and stupid but for now i'm gonna put it in that okay genius villains with tiny goals <sighs> i don't care about this one passes this ends now continues <laughs> hey this is funny <laughs> this ends now proceeds to continue <laughs> but like but this is fine i kind of like well do i like this one it can get a bit irritating so i think i'll keep it at passes genius villains with tiny girls yeah passes both of these both of these are meh i'm not angry at them or like frustrated with them they're just kind of there putting down the cape that's fine. I'm thinking Wally West. I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's damaging me. It's hurting my psyche. I can't stand it. I'm going to put it down. Maybe, whether it's temporarily done or it's permanently. Like, I think it's fine. It's a good character development tool if it's done right. And if not, it's still just like a good, a defined trope. I think it's a, a something that I would like to see more, honestly, a bit. I think it works as an Elseworld thing. Big, massive, tragic hero deaths. Oh, yeah. Um, Mm. Um, uh, I think it's good like the whole you know Jason Todd dying for instance or Superman dying the death of Superman I think it's fine I, I, it's not like I'm in love with it and I think I, I think it's very meaningful but obviously it usually gets retconned so it's questionable how meaningful it is but I think it's a good tool you know, to spurt people into action. Kind of makes people connect where they wouldn't have connected if the hero was still alive. I, I do like that aspect of it. Oh, I've got three lines left out of four. <laughs> okay, uh, time travel as an excuse. Um, oh, I really don't like this one. I really don't like this one. It really pissed me off. End game, please. Nah, honestly, no. Uh, uh. As an excuse is the key thing. Not time travel to fix something of, even for good reason because it's very, very related, you know. But like time travel is the is our way out. That annoys. Let's just go back in time to fix it. Like that. That irritates me quite a lot. Uh, a villain and hero are not so different. Also annoying. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Literally shut up. Like the, the Joker and Batman are similar. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. The only time this ever, I ever want to see this ever is magneto and charles if it's not magneto and professor x talking about mutant and the whole malcolm x and martin luther king parallel all that stuff i don't want to hear you talk because you're not gonna tell me that my guy my girl who's saving people on the daily who's putting in the work to help people it's the same as a guy or a girl or a they who are going out of their way to hurt people are you out of your mind the, i guess the only reason that i'm not saying it's eradicate is because of charles and magneto because sometimes it works like some of the heroes who are like more ambiguous like they're not so different but in general oh yellow lantern yellow lantern okay yellow lantern yellow lantern is basically when you know the whole um villain has the same power just a different color or something i was gonna say venom but i just realized like i do know a bit about spider-man i can't be caught on camera saying <laughs> Yeah, unironically, people will come for me. <laughs> this is the yellow lantern thing. This is Shadow Man, you know, this is the opposite of Flash, you know, the, the yellow guy. It was me, Barry. And yeah, so that's what that is. I don't really like it. I think it's overused and stupid, but I don't really hate it. So I'm going to put it there. Villain to anti hero. Oh, I can't send this. Hero to anti hero, I think it's fine. But villain to anti hero? Oh! Don't chat! Oh, you're telling me the Demon King is now gonna be the hero because something happened? Shut up! I'm sick of it! It's like redeeming literally all of Batman's Rogue Gallery. Well, not all of, but a lot of Batman's Rogue Gallery, for instance, like Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Riddler. Like, what is it? Croc? Isn't it Killer Croc now as well? People are talking about Killer Croc being with Roy. Isn't there some story with Roy and Killer Croc I heard about? I don't. Oh my. The thing is, right, is most of the time when you call someone a villain, there's enough reason to call them a villain. If you call someone a villain, like you just say, oh, they're a bit bad guy, that's one thing. But most villains, if not every villain, does something to far orphans orphan orphans i actually don't i really don't mind this one i know people don't like it I, I know a lot of people don't like it like i even wrote a story with orphan it's a bit you know 
done okay i have to put it in overused it is overused but at the same time i don't think it's bad okay, minimal training best results that's annoying i i mean okay i don't know maybe more stupid than i hate because minimal training like you know they get a power up or something like they they get oh i need to be able to defeat someone and so like the hero will train for three weeks and then they'll go out and destroy this villain who has been at it for what five years like it's uh, often in the isekais where they get transported in they, they might get trained for like five days and then they go and face a big demon demon lord or something because in a lot of other isekais they go out and they just risk it all and who knows you could have died straight away like goblin slayer they could have just gotten immediately captured in the it's supposed to be the easiest place the goblins are supposed to be like the easiest villains and the easiest enemies to fight but they can sometimes be just way too strong and so yeah that's why minimal training and best results just is a trope like that people try to subvert sometimes and so yeah i think it is overused okay lona emo misunderstood overused simple as that i don't really hate it it's just overused wait let me reveal my big plan uh stupid i think it's cute sometimes when villains do that but it's just overall it can be irritating like oh my god wait before i kill you let me reveal my big plan is like you obviously didn't need to do that <laughs> but they just want to do it so that the hero has a chance to destroy the plan <laughs> so they know like it's it's annoying it's dumb magic exists uh, this might be hate i hate because you're telling me you live in a world with superheroes and you are a superhero and somebody comes to you and says oh i'm being possessed and that's where you draw the line <laughs> that's where you're like are you crazy like you're flying okay civilians blaming the hero for everything oh my i hate this i don't uh, you know what i think it has a purpose like let's say jameson spider-man like the, the journalist that really hates him but i i i mm, i can't stand it it's another one of like the hero and villain are not so different it's like if you didn't come and fly through this building and save me my building would still be here yeah but you'd be effing dead <laughs> yeah. or why are you blaming the heroes for the villain's fault this is i think this, uh, it's like this really stupid way of just like berating the hero for no reason like a bully kind of thing and so i really i just don't like it like one punch man did it well like they, they were misunderstanding they didn't realize he was the hero that's the reason why they didn't like him they're blaming him because they thought he was taking credit when he didn't actually do anything so that's different <sighs> yeah okay what ifs um um as misery porn yeah that's annoying like um just you get a what if or an ev else world kind of scenario of your favorite stories and your favorite vi um heroes and it's literally just an excuse for misery porn that can be irritating i mean injustice is that you know justice league turned rogue split into half you know so i yeah i i mean, i i don't mind it though i think the point of it is that it's a what if world like it's an au it's an alternate universe it's, you can't i don't really don't know why you wouldn't like it like it's just well not like you wouldn't like it but it's like it's not bad like it has a purpose it has a meaning i think it passes retconning deaths oh i can't be caught on camera saying anything against retconning deaths do you know why because jason died twice and um i love jason torch so i think when you do it with villains it kind of pisses me off but with heroes i don't mind it i'm like oh, well i mean he's he's back i don't know who, who would have thunk it so i'll put it in it passes yeah oh my oh i hate this one Oh, I hate this one. okay yes lying saved me no i don't forgive you it's basically one where you lie it's pretty self-explanatory you lie to save someone or to help somebody you're like you, you do something or, or you do something small right and that betrays them and then you reveal hey i'm sorry i lied to you it was to save you now you're safe and they're like i still don't forgive you i'm literally like get over yourself like it get 
over yourself it happens a lot in like stories where the the hero is dating a civilian or somebody who isn't involved like the hero will be like oh i couldn't come home or oh i had to lie and say that i was somewhere else or some, something like that and then the other person just hates them for it or not exactly like a hero specific trope but it definitely happens in a lot of hero stuff where the main character is dating or is friends with somebody who isn't a hero or something like that and that is yeah uh, it's not my cup of tea not gonna lie villains don't die or suffer villains don't die or suffer mm -mm. i don't really like it it's stupid yeah so they'll go to prison or they'll go to jail but they don't even suffer they don't die and they don't really stay in jail for instance like they leave like they never get the consequences that they deserve and it's really frustrating like the consequence is the potential of them going to get the consequences that they deserve but never that they actually do like, and i think that sounds like i'm like obsessed with them <laughs> like i want to see that like oh my god i really want to see. like no it's not like i want to see them in pain i just got a theon theon greyjoy and um ramsey flashback in my head i don't want to see that kind of thing again but what i'm saying is i want to see at least indication of those kind of things you know bad people getting what they, they deserve is what i want to see not the process heroes flippant control of their powers i don't really fully get it like when people mentioned it i was like mm, i mean yeah mm. Well, I mean, who cares? Like, you know, you know, if they don't control their powers well, then they don't control their powers well. That can be annoying. Underrated heroes treated badly. That isn't fun. That annoys me. It's not a hate because I think it's useful, but it's it's annoying like especially because it's overused like you know an underrated hero like i don't know green arrow who's underrated is just the butt of a joke it can be overused sometimes i don't think it's awful though but yeah definitely overused it makes sense but yeah overused overpowered protagonist and classic the classic i actually like overpowered protagonist i kind of like it i just like the whole they ain't got nothing to worry about like i just i like i like that i can't lie i like that i think that's the only one next to evil superman oh don't come for me i won't kill but i'll torture this is mm, i think it's fine because you know a lot of people have a lot of heroes have moral codes they don't want to kill but they're willing to torture which i honestly think is better i think that you you want them to be more cruel right you want them to do what the villain deserves. but if they're willing this relates to the inconsistent morals i think but if they're willing to torture but not kill then still the villain is getting what they deserve it's just that the, the hero has a twisted moral code which is not exactly as 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 wholesome as you would think ageless status quo okay this is the big one this is a big one um i think it passes mostly i think i added the word ages specifically because status quo is too vague it's the format do you know what i mean like things don't revert back to the status quo the same way like it's not like short lasting character growth where things revert back for no reason it's more like the the fact that spider-man is going to stay his age spider-man is going to stay in that kind of area of his life or the whole you know stuff like that and it's like I think that's just the way that the stories are written whereas in like an isekai they age or something you know and even this with the ageless aspect of it specifically focusing on age i think that i still think it passes i think it's fine i don't think it's a problem uh yeah okay stealing everything they need <laughs> this is overused it's annoying sometimes as well they have sticky fingers man they'll they'll think oh, i need something let me take this person's car oh i need something let me take this mayor's pen or let me like they just keep stealing stuff all the time and it's like this trope that you probably wouldn't have thought about too much until i've said it just now but you, now you're thinking about it aren't you like the way that they just steal everything it's like oh my god to put it back it kind of relates to the no consequences for the mc's actions but it's very specifically stealing they they always take it's overused and a bit stupid but i definitely don't dislike it i don't know to be honest i put it as past because it's kind of funny <laughs> it's kind of funny do lawyers exist that relates to the villains don't suffer or die trope so do lawyers exist is a big question because we don't see the law <laughs> the boys we see it but outside of the boys dude we don't see that 
or in x-men maybe i think they do it sometimes as well but like we don't see prison we don't see the process we don't see actual just businesses operating as well like we don't see a hero going to jail for a misdemeanor or something like we don't see a lot of the the government doing what the government needs to do outside of like sending superhuman things against each other or lex being the president or something also it's like are you seriously telling me that they they there's no one willing to prosecute a lot of these criminals and these villains okay oh my god one more line one more line one more line one more line they hope they hope the last 10 or so oh ooh, ooh. okay i was gonna count but i think that's redundant because i'm gonna go through these at light speed <laughs> light speed repairs okay this this does irritate me i kind of i don't i don't know if i hate it but when the world gets blown up riddle me this how the f does everything get rebuilt like this? Like this is related to status quo, but not at the same time. Because like, show me the rebuilding. I don't know if I hate it or it's stupid, but I, I don't like it. I think it's dumb like to, to ignore it. So I think I'll put it in more in I hate. Clones, duplicates, decoys, I, I don't mind this. People don't like this one. It's a similar with the, I'm, I'm mad I'm going to be a villain, which is similar to that one, kind of, because you know, evil Superman. Uh, I don't know, Superboy, clone duplicates uh, duplicate decoys i don't mind it it's fine honestly i think it's overall as a trope it's good the villain is right <laughs> it's saying that the villain has a good enough reason to do what they're doing i guess that's also the villain and anti-hero thing i'm not a fan of the villain is right i'm not a fan of that i think it's really dumb because often the villains just cross the lines just not likable right unlikable to the point where it's like oh ugh, go to jail <laughs> like, that's what a good villain is so to be right it's dumb you need understandable sympathetic i don't mind those things but right right implies that their methods are also right no right means right and if right means right then they're not right <laughs> so no that's like saying andrew tate is right because he said that men have mental illnesses too like yes they do women are equal to cars no that's i don't agree with that one <laughs> everyone has kryptonite this mm, it's overused i think it's not i don't hate it it's the whole thing of their weaknesses are very rare very rare weaknesses nobody knows but then everybody knows because everybody has kryptonite from the moment you have powers there's always some kind of weakness or some kind of backdrop or thing that takes you back it happens enough to the point where it's like um uh, stop never uses powers casually yeah i don't like this one i think it's stupid as well oh you're powerful and you have these powers but green lantern ha has these powers but all he wants to do is fly or something he doesn't want to i don't know use it in his work or use it in art or use it in like just use your character your your powers for just casual things i don't mean saving a cat or making yourself lunch that cold scene where superman is cutting his beard or whatever or his facial hair with his laser beam eyes and that's cool and everything but why not go further than that like I, f I feel like you should just be using it all the time and that yeah i think it's stupid obvious secret identity <laughs> it's a classic i don't think you can really do much it is a bit annoying but it's a classic it, it's supposed to be there like you're supposed to think oh my god every how is nobody noticing that so yeah maybe that's just my own fondness for it i'm i'm willing to i'm willing to accept that bad power scaling obviously that annoys me bad power scaling it's just you know i don't do i have to explain it my gamers know <laughs> yeah damien wayne uh beating slade wilson a, an assassin who is supposed to be an amazing assassin one of the best assassins in the entire planet of all kind of all time and Damien Wayne, this kid who is extremely talented, but is also just a kid and not just small, but also immature, is supposed to be able to defeat him with two broken arms. Or, or in the Justice League animated series, another example of DC, in the first season, anyone who watched it knows they completely nerfed Superman. 
Oh, actually, you know what? I think I'd put it in eradicate. Woman in refrigerators. <laughs> this is a concept I literally only found out about because of this video and me researching for this video. So women in refrigerators is this whole concept which was created because of some uh, woman in a refrigerator. No, <laughs> but it's this whole concept talking about how it's a literary trope. It serves to motivate male characters and it's an event colloquially known as fridging. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't mind it. I don't think it's that bad. I think that... Where did I put it? Oh, it's still him. I think that it can go to pass because ultimately sometimes people need to be fridged i don't know sometimes people can be used for plot devices i don't think it's a bad thing if you have a loved once and you need to be hurt and it helps motivate the characters it, it can work okay i will put it in overused because it's definitely overused but it's not like terrible oh three more okay happy lives are boring i hate this one i think it has a purpose which is why i'm not putting any eradicated but i really don't like this one happy lives are boring just ruining all the heroes happiness at every moment of every day like do you not have a life like do you not have anything you enjoy with your life like do you have nothing that you like bruce and selena were supposed to get married what happened spider-man is supposed to be a happy guy what happens you know it's just the whole thing of like let's ruin this hero's life no they can never have happy lives like we always need some angst and it's like yes we need some conflict but we don't need angst all the time. I would like to see it where there's periods of time where people are just happy and everyone's connected to the MC. Um, overused. Raptor is this hero, I mean villain, sorry, who is an assassin for hire. And guess what? <laughs> he knew Dick's parents. That is overused. I don't think I don't like it. Like, it's fine, but it's definitely, definitely overused. So I'm putting it there. Last but not least, oh my god, last but not least. Last but not least. Last but not least. Last but not least. Stolen decisions by another character could not care less. <laughs> I mean, okay, actually, actually, I lie. Tell a lie. It's a bit stupid. It's like the whole thing of, uh, oh, should you kill this person? And then somebody else makes a decision for them. And it happens pretty frequently in hero stories. So I get it. It's not, it's not great, but it's also not really that annoying. That's it. Whew. Take a deep breath. It's all gonna be okay. <coughs> Reshuffling. <laughs> I think I'm pretty much done. I'm pretty much done. Oh, and with that, the sun came back. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is the tier list. These are the worst superhero tropes I could find. And I ranked them. If you want to do one thing, then subscribe. Otherwise, check out my other videos. I don't know what place it's going to be in. And let me know what you saw, what you think is the worst one, or any other videos you want me to make. And then I'll say goodbye, Johnny Young, Johnny Young. That sucks. They suck. So bad. Why do they exist? People need to stop making ugly and stupid and dumb tropes. Otherwise, I'll literally end them and I'll quit everything and I'll just take the jobs.